Whoa, 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 what up? It's your favorite Korean boy back with the Call of Duty lobby mic quality. Today, we're talking about the top 10 songs on Mr. Morale and the big steppers. I've sat with this album for what feels like years, decades, millenniums, and as the brilliant scholarly sage of hip-hop review channels on the same intellectual status of Einstein and Aristotle, I've come to the conclusion that this album is pretty good. Now you know what, that's an understatement, this project is also not bad. Hold up, no, it's more than that, it's, it's, it's beautiful. In all seriousness though, I love this album. I mean, come on, it's Kendrick, what did you expect? And to all of y'all who get pressed by my opinions, cause, oh boy, I can already hear the keyboard typing sound effects. Just know that my opinion will always be objectively superior to yours, alright? This is my... Number 10 is a song that is growing on me with every passing minute. And of course, I'm talking about Die Hard. Bro, this song is a vibe. The vibes. The vibes are immaculate. Blah. And Amanda Reifer's vocals are amazing and so catchy, but aside from it being a heavenly vibe, I also love how this song alludes to a lot of the topics Kendrick will dive deep into on this album. Kendrick is afraid of opening up and revealing his true self because he thinks that his fans won't be able to relate to him and accept him for who he is. It's a fantastic track, I can't stop listening to it. At number 9, one of the songs of Mr. Morale that I had on repeat for the longest time, I'm talking about Silent Hill. This man put laser sounds in his production like he's Buzz Lightyear. And then Kodak hits us with one of the best features on the album, Low Key. Not even Low Key, Kodak actually outshines Kendrick on his own song. God diggity darn, I'm flabbergasted. Number 8 is Mirror. What a beautiful closing track to the album. The production is a combination of orchestral flourishes, electronic Black Panther drums, and what sounds like mouth clicking noises. I don't know what the heck is going on, but it's gorgeous. And the song itself is extremely relatable. It's all about Kendrick prioritizing himself over dropping new music or being the savior of rap. Even the king, the god of hip hop, needed therapy. Speaking of needing therapy, I need therapy after listening to number 7, the 7th best track on this album, We Cry Together. This song got me feeling disgusted, absolutely repulsed. Basically, the song plays out like a fight. Nah, hold up. Fight is underselling it. This song plays out like a nuclear battle between Kendrick and Taylor Page, the most toxic relationship portrayed in the form of a song and the future is nowhere to be found. It's truly a difficult song to listen to because you know somewhere out there. Somewhere out there. There's a toxic couple shouting the exact same insults at each other. After being subjected to this insanity, I just want something calm and sweet and relaxing. And that's what you get. Cause number six is the gorgeous Purple Hearts. And yeah, I know it ain't summer yet, but when you throw the song on the ox, the world suddenly feels brighter and warmer and summerier. Who knew we desperately needed a Kendrick Lamar, Summer Walker, and Ghostface Killer collaboration? Best line on the song and possibly this album is. Yes sir, ladies listen closely sometimes, you just gotta eat your man's ass. Number 5 is the intro track, United in Grief. This song is the auditory equivalent of a bunch of talented theater kids putting on a fancy theater production. It really feels like Kendrick is on a stage in front of hundreds of pretentious theater fans rapping about his life since he dropped Damn. Production is heavenly, the lyrics are top notch, the energy is off the charts. Hearing it in my car on the aux when it first dropped, not gonna lie, I almost teared up. I hope you find some paradise. Yes, even the rugged, Herculean, emotionless gods like myself can get emotional. Much like ADHD, Swimming Pools, Backseat Freestyle, King Kunta, and Humble, N95 is the album's hot mainstream banger. N95, of course, referring to the N95 face masks that have become a true fashion statement over the past two years. One of my favorites on here, I love how Kendrick can make the whole pandemic feel like an apocalyptic wasteland with his manic vocal inflections and hostile, barbaric, and out-of-pocket lyrics. The production slaps hard too. One of my favorite beats on the 
the album. Yeah, it's an absolute banger. Number three is an even hotter banger. Mr. Morale, bruh, the primal, animalistic energy you get from the song is intoxicating. This is what I wish the Black Panther soundtrack sounded like. I also think Sam Du, fellow PG Langer, Tana Leone, and Kendrick's vocals work together really well. The production sounds really crisp and bouncy. I love the Wingardium Liviosar background vocals. Whoops, my bad. I meant to say expecto pat- In terms of subject matter, Mr. Morrell covers mostly generational trauma within the black community. He ends the song on a hopeful note as he states, I'm sacrificing myself to start the healing, which transitions perfectly into Mother I Sober, our number two song. This song is heart-wrenching. It's Kendrick Lamar in a deep therapy session. If there's one word I can use to describe this song in particular, it would be vulnerable. Kendrick reveals his infidelity to his wife, but it goes deeper than that, saying that a lot of black men are abused during their adolescence, and to cope with that pain, they often end up hurting other women to reclaim their own manhood. The cycle of pain continues from one generation to another, and even though Kendrick himself wasn't abused like many other rappers, he still fell prey to his addictions. But you know, Kendrick, he might say he's not the savior anymore, but just like Tony Tony Stark in Avengers Endgame, he saves us one last time by finally breaking the generational curse. I'm sure there's a lot more to the song, but regardless, it's truly a profound, cathartic, and beautiful moment on the album. But now, we're at number one, boys, come on, it's father time, instantaneously, I knew this was the best song on the album. Kendrick is talking about his daddy issues and trauma as passed down from one generation to the next. It's a heavy topic, but the song still sounds amazing. Yes, it is deep, but at its core, musically, it's a great song. The instrumental is fantastic. The chord progression is beautiful. Sampha's chorus is a top tier musical moment. The sample flip is heavenly. Yeah, it's a perfect song from yet another amazing Kendrick Lamar album, and that concludes concludes today's TED talk. Thank you so much for watching. Stay strong. Eat your veggies. Love you. Peace out.